Welcome to worship. We have a special treat today. Our kids are going to begin our worship service for us this morning. So, uh, Colleen?
Aren't the kids great? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Have a seat, everybody. And uh, yes, I'm hoping that that's got enough. Yeah. <laughs> You know, kids are, are, as I say, they're a trust from God. And so it's it just, for us adults, we need to do well by them. And it's so great to hear. You guys did such a great job. I've got something here. Let's see. We'll just get right into this. Oh, my goodness. I had such a time this morning. I was trying to get this all set up and, I, and, and having, having a nice pretty picture and I ripped it what am I going to do oh, well I got a stapler I think of that works no a stapler won't work a rubber band a scissors no, I don't know if I can. I can't. I don't know if I can find anything. I'm gonna dig deep in here. Oh no, a clothespin. No, no. Oh, oh. gotta see if I can find it. No, no, no. Some t- what tape work? Yeah. yeah. All right. Wow. So you think that tape can pull the pieces? All these things, all these other things, well, sometimes you got to, you know, to pull pieces together, sometimes, sometimes a clothespin will work. But well, sometimes Yeah, and sometimes a rubber band will work, but tape in this case is the perfect thing. I can see that now. It's ripped. It's ripped. Yes, it's really ripped. You, you see what that picture is of? Flowers. flowers. What kind of Flowers. They're tulips, tulips, actually. They're tulips. So, okay. So, all right. Who wants to help me tape it? Me! Me! Here. Here, you can try a piece. All right. Here, who? Come on around here. Yeah, here we go. You you, you didn't try a piece. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you try one too. Okay, that'll be good. That'll be good. Oh, that's, they're doing pretty good. A little bit more to go here. Very good. All right. See, what we're, gonna, what we're doing, what we're, I, and I'm, I'm sure you probably did this downstairs too, but we're talking about God's peace. How God's grace and peace help bring the pieces together. No, oh, it's upside down. Yes, it is. Very good. God's grace and peace help pull the pieces together. And that is such a wonderful thing that you, when you know that everything is going to be okay. And that's, that's a sign that God is with you. When you know it's, it's going to be okay. So, so shall we thank, let, let's bow our heads and thank God for pulling the pieces together. All right. Can you repeat after me? Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thanks, thanks. For pulling the pieces together. <laughs> so help me. So help me. <laughs> to trust you. To trust you. In everything. In everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> now we're going to see if we have. Let's. You can come and take a treat. Take take one, and you sang for us. Now we're going to sing for you. All right. So let's sing. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible. Oh, share. Yep. Yep. Okay, you can take one for your sister if you're going sh- to share.
God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Please rise as we sing of the greatness of our Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for your spirit that has gathered us here. We are standing on holy ground. You have made this place holy by your presence. You have made this time holy as you gathered us together to experience you and your word. It is your holiness, your beauty, and your love that fills this day with promise. Forgive us with, for hold, withholding ourselves from you. Cleanse our hearts and open our eyes to your heart. Help us to know the power of the gifts you have given us and the seriousness of the call you have placed on our lives to share what you have given. Help us to serve you well. Thank you, Lord for hearing your children this morning. Amen. Please be seated. 
This is a special time for the giving jar. Today's giving jar is designated to the youth mission trip. Let us welcome this special time of giving. Now I have our scriptures readings for today. (laughs) 
Our first reading comes from Romans chapter 5, as printed in your bulletin. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while, I were God's, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Our responsive reading is from Psalm 86. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. A reading from Romans chapter 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. The word of the Lord.
Aren't our kids great? Yes. yes. It's wonderful, and, and especially a, a special thank you to all the Sunday school teachers. If you're helping in the classroom, uh, you're doing amazing, wonderful work, and thank you so much for it. Now, there's nothing like uh, showing the way to, 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 to kids, especially when they're young. So if you were, were going to summarize your life in one line, what might that line be? Put your life in a sentence. Just one. What might that be? You ever tried to do that? Well, just to help you be a little, to, to get those creative juices flowing, here we have a couple of uh, uh, attempts at that uh, carved into gravestones across the United States. Here's one. Raised four daughters with only one bathroom, four beautiful daughters, by the way, and only one bathroom, and still there was love. See? There you go. And here's one. This is Kay's fudge recipe. I mean, what is it? good food and memories. They all kind of dance together so well. So there, there was that attempt. And here's a good one. Kim call, or Jesus called and Kim answered. Yeah, so if you're, if you're looking for something creative, that's something to prime the pump. And, of course, this week, we're ta taking on the second part of chapter 29 of, on Paul's mission. And this has to deal with all of Paul's letters. And in the, reading those letters, we find out that Paul was quite creative uh, in, in how he summarized his life in one line. And he used that line in every letter that bears his name. And here is that line. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You will find that in the introduction of every letter, somewhere in, in, that, that, in the introduction to every letter he wrote. And this is really a creative greeting. It's, a, it's, it's creative because it's very close to the customary Greek greeting. Uh, and you find that the Greek greeting was kairain, which simply means greetings or hi. Very simple. And Paul substituted in his place charis, which means grace. The two words are, are quite similar together. And then Paul adds to that the Hebrew greeting of shalom, which means peace. Uh, and that sense of peace that is a sense of not just absence of war, absence of conflict, it is a whole a statement of well-being that everything is together uh, where there is nothing missing and nothing broken. And so what Paul is doing in this greeting is he's not just saying hi, he is, he is demonstrating his whole experience with God. So let's just unfold that a little bit. Uh, as Pastor Bill shared last week, that Saul of Tarsus, the man that we commonly refer to, that we know as Paul, he was highly educated. He was a genius. I mean, he's quite a scholar. Uh, and he, his thought, his ways of thinking about the world was, was, uh, was very much similar to the Jewish leaders of his day, that God's salvation came through keeping the law. And a good part of that law, of course, that we, that's very familiar to us is... Over here, the Ten Commandments. Yes, we even have a window dedicated to that <laughs> uh, right over here. The Ten Commandments. I mean, just, just think, you know, if, you, if everybody around you lived by the Ten Commandments, what do you think, the, what would happen to our world? Oh, it would be awesome, wouldn't it? All right? So now, what if you make that law in a way that you know, you impose it on people, that they must live by it or there's going to be consequences. And Paul was very strict in this. He, and that's what he was, I should say Saul at the time, uh, that's the way he thought, is that these Ten Commandments and everything attached to them uh, were to be imposed on people. Because why? Because when everybody keeps the law, that's when Messiah will come. And so he pushed it all the way to imprisoning people and giving them a death sentence. And in, this, in that category of people, that was the fate of those who followed Jesus. Because 
those who, who uh, followed Jesus made the outlandish claim that not only was Jesus alive, but Jesus is, is the Messiah, that Messiah had come. And Saul could not acknowledge that until he met Jesus. He met Jesus, risen from the dead, and he faced the Son of God and he saw his efforts for what they are. He thought he was bringing about God's righteousness, but now he saw himself as a man with blood on his hands, that he was guilty of murder. You know, have you ever had an experience of not only being wrong, but being dead wrong? I mean, like, really, really wrong. You thought you were right, but you couldn't have been more wrong. You know, when, when I was a kid, I, I, I had, this was my first memorable experience of, of this. Um, I loved taking care of the, of, the, of the cattle, and so, and especially the calves. That, Dad gave me that job, and, and I had this one particular uh, uh, calf that was my favorite. Uh, we had just gotten into the European breeds, and, and this was an amazing Simmental heifer. And she was beautiful. She had the classic Simmental look. And not only that, she was mild-mannered and trainable. And if you ever show cattle, you know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, she was just an amazing animal. Uh, well, she, she picked up a respiratory virus. And according to vet's instructions, we started giving her injections of antibiotics. And I was very good at that. So I made sure it got done. And, but that respiratory virus turned into pneumonia. And so we had to call the, call the vet out. And the vet gave the instructions after tr he did his own little treatment. He said, stop medicating her, stop the injections. That's what he told my dad, and of course my dad relayed that to me, and of course there was no why attached, just stop it. And in my, in my mind said, that's not right. You know, this is, this is the prize animal. I'm going to do everything possible for her. So I snuck giving that animal injections. And a few days later, she died. And... She might have died of pneumonia, but a, 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 a contributing cause was that she was over-medicated. Here I was. I thought I was doing the right thing. I was absolutely convinced of it. But I contributed to her death. And I never forgot that. You know, I thought I was... I, I thought I knew more than my dad knew at the time. That I was wrong, really wrong. That's, a, that's an experience of a little one. Well, just now, now just put on Saul's shoes for a while. He really was convinced, totally convinced, he was working for God and, dis and discovered he was working against him and maybe even working for Satan. Uh, and when Saul faced Jesus, all of this became too clear. You know, God, I was enforcing your law. This is a beautiful thing, and it makes so much sense. I just, you know, how could I have been so wrong as to enforce it like I did? I, but now I see it. The Ten Commandments show us what, what love should look like and why we need your help because we can't perfectly keep the law. Your prophets testify that you are slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, not wrath. You know, how could, could I miss this? I punished people. And how the true sacrifices that you desire are a broken and contrite spirit before you. That we are not complete without your presence in our lives. And how I miss this. You know, and especially for those who had claimed that Messiah has, had come and his name was Jesus and here you are. <laughs> How could I have been so wrong? And I know I'm dead. I am so dead. 
To Saul's surprise, Jesus didn't kill him. Jesus embraced him. A man with blood on his hands, and the scales fell from his eyes, and he experienced, again, not the wrath of God, but the grace of God. God embraced Saul uh, with his undeserved favor. That's what grace means, that it's totally a gift. It's kind of like Christmas on steroids. Do your kids really deserve uh, those, those gifts that you give? Did they, did they uh, meet a, a level of standard where, you know, they merited that? Probably not. In the same way, it doesn't matter how hard we work, you can never be perfect, can you? And that's okay because now we know we need God's help. And our, our lives are not complete without God and God's presence in our lives. And another way to remember grace is uh, if you write out grace, it's God's riches at Christ's expense. You ever hear that? It's a wonderful way of explaining grace. God's, gra God's, uh, God's riches at Christ's expense. My goodness, isn't it amazing how that just kind of flew out of my head? Yes. So uh, anyway, what Paul and... Uh, what Paul experienced is, is God extending his hand to pull him up as his beloved child. And Paul wrote about this in, in, by saying, and we read this this morning, that God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And, and there we go. Let's skip, we're skipping ahead just a little bit. In other words, God's habit, what, what God meets you and me with, his grace, His favor, even if you're His enemy at the time. It's like a father putting the family robe around the once prodigal son. You remember Jesus telling that story. And every time Paul wrote that greeting in his letters, grace to you, he proclaimed that the life I live, I live by the grace of God. That grace is what makes me who I am. God extended to me amazing favor. And now I live to share that favor with others. So grace to you. Now, and he continued with the word peace. Now peace is also a common word. There we go. It's a common word. Now peace, we, when we think about peace, we think about calmness uh, and and not being stressed. It's kind of like listening to the birds in the morning. Did you, hear, did you listen to them this morning? They were having a good time. And this time of year, it's wonderful to do that. So just to drink it in. And that's part of it. But what Paul was using was, the, was shalom, that Hebrew meaning for peace. And that, re, that refers to a sense of well-being, a sense of wholeness. It means... Uh, 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 that the presence of God is there to, to uh, pull the pieces together and you find yourself in a place where there is nothing broken and nothing missing. You are complete. You're whole. And that means you're, you're feeling safe. You're feeling confident. Why? Because God's presence has pulled everything together. That is peace. It is amazing peace. Jesus says this to his disciples shortly before he was crucified. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. So Jesus gives peace, not stress. And the peace that Jesus gives, gives us peace with God. In other words, you know your sins are forgiven. And it gives you the peace of God, which means you have a sense of well-being where you, you feel complete and whole and safe. And, and also adds peace with each other, may, making it possible for us to be reconciled with each other so that our relationships are all whole. And Paul understood that, it, that it's not about the rules then, is it? It's about relationship. 
You follow Jesus, and, and, and when you, as you follow Jesus, you will understand why the rules are there. Yes, they are necessary. And that is why Paul called out the damage done when we sin against each other. That Paul called people out who were quarreling with each other, who lied and who stole uh, from others, or who engaged in pr promiscuous sex. It destroys relationship. It destroys trust. And so Paul encouraged people to work hard towards restoring God, this God kind of peace, to rebuild relationships, to rebuild trust and safety and a sense of justice and mercy where there is nothing missing and nothing broken. And that kind of grace and peace comes from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. It is God actively rescuing the human race. Now, Pastor Tim Keller, he's a, he's a, um, a pastor out in, uh, in New York State, and he told this story about a woman that showed up at his door. Uh, of, he came into the church, and she was really wondering what following Jesus was all about. Uh, and so, it, and this faith journey started with, uh, uh, with an experience with her boss, She was working on a project, and she made a mistake. Not just a small mistake, she made a big mistake. It was like her career was done kind of mistake. It was big. But her boss, strangely, went to bat for her. He faced the board, as this was a, really a bad, it was bad for business. Um, he, so he faced the board and, and just pleaded for her. He says, uh, uh, I, uh, I, she's my responsibility. Give her one more chance. Um, don't fire her. She's my responsibility. And so they did. They gave her another chance. So she came into his office to express her gratitude. And, but there was this nagging curiosity. She asked him, why did you do for me what you did? Initially, he just kind of dismissed it. You know, don't mention it, it's forgotten. But she pressed him. She just had to know. You know, no, really, I've had bosses take credit for what I've done. I never experienced a boss taking the hit because of what I did. Please, I need to know. Why did you do what you did? And he planted his hands on the desk. And he says, okay, but I'm only going to tell you this once. And remember, you pressed me. He said, I'm a Christian. And I've dedicated my life to the one who took the hit for me. And I live my life to do the same for others. And her next question was, where do you go to church? And that's why she showed up. Wow. So grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Paul experienced there again, God pulling together so many pieces. Jew came together with Gentile. The boundaries of race and language were torn down and a whole humanity took its shape. And God's grace makes every day a gift and opens us to do God's work of fostering His peace at every turn. That wholeness where we work towards eliminating the lies between us and we confess our sins to each other and we forgive one another. And we live in the understanding that what we do with our bodies matters because they are the very dwelling places of God's Spirit. And knowing that you are secure in God's presence allows us to live life with great courage no matter what life throws at us because we know that all is well and, and will be well. Our lives are safe in God's hands. So you can see there's a lot packed in, into Paul's clever little greeting. It's his whole walk with God. So as we go about this, this week, I want you to consider three things. First of all, be aware of God's grace in your life. Count your blessings. Look at all the little gifts. Yes, take in the birds in the morning. It's amazing. Count them out. Secondly, receive the peace that God gives. Receive that sense of wholeness in your life. Breathe in the fact that you are a blessed child, valued, sacrificed for. 
breathe in that, that sense of peace. That, that God's presence gives you a space where you, where you can become whole and you know that you're safe. So, and thirdly, bring, when, that, when the door opens, bring that, uh, that experience of God's grace and peace to others. It may be as simple as a smile or a word of encouragement. It may mean making amends to heal a relationship or maybe comforting someone who is mourning a loss. It might mean inviting someone to church. You know, let's extend God's kingdom where there is wholeness, where there is nothing broken, nothing missing. So now may, the, may uh, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us keep and live the faith. Amen. Would you please rise if you're able? Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Gracious Father, thank you for Jesus, your perfect gift of grace. Your saving help is sure because nothing can remove us from your hand. Our lives are not complete without you. In fact, you created us in your image to be connected with you. Thank you for restoring that relationship. Help us to receive your gracious gifts every moment of every day that we may reflect you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, there are so many who have no idea how lost or out of control they are. Open their hearts to the working of your Spirit. And open us to those who have doubts, those who are tired and stressed, those who are burdened with guilt, those who know so little joy. May we be a welcoming voice calling them to hear your amazing grace and the wonderful peace that you give where there is nothing broken and nothing missing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, there is so much anger in our country right now. Too many have suffered from it. Please help families who have been victimized by violent crime. We lift to you those in Nashville, those in Alabama, those in Texas, and so many uh, other places. We lift up to you our major cities where violent crime is, has taken hold, and it's so commonplace we don't even hear it reported in the news. Lord, by the power of your Spirit, push back the chaos of this world and help us to put in its place your life, your peace, your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, thank you for blessing us with your fullness as your church. You have richly provided what we've needed. And we do lift up to you the call team as they continue to pursue an associate pastor. We lift to you the staff and the council. Uh, that we would be one as you are one and that we would work the wisdom that you give it by the power of your spirit. And open us all to the beauty of showing hospitality and eating meals together and devoting ourselves to the study of your word and praying together. That relationships may be whole and trust may be restored and strengthened. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we lift to you those who are in need of your healing. We lift to you Darlene Petska and John Anderson, Rena Burnt and Chad Tracy and Carolee Lindenberg. May they have a sure confidence in your loving care. We lift to you Sue Weggie as she mourns the loss of her husband, Gary. And we also join with family and friends as they pray for Abby and Tim and Linda and Bruce, Asher and Talon, Peggy and Brett, Don and Alyssa, and those that we name in our hearts at this time. We also lift to you those in military service, Alex Holly, Ryan Baxter, Tim Davies, and all those who are following your call to defend our nation. May they know your shepherding hand each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now may your grace and peace Cause us to work boldly that others may hear your call and join us before your throne. We lay these petitions and our lives before you. Grant them and whatever else you see that we need. For we pray in the great name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in the sharing of our Lord's Supper.
Let us lift up our hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, also the cup saying, This cup is a new commitment to my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. Because you are one with us, O Christ, make us one with you as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table has been prepared. I ask that you be seated and the communion servers please come forward. I think I need one more helper this morning. Okay, very good. Thank you, Cindy.
Would you please rise if you're able? Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with this favor and grant you His peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't that fun? Yes. And just to know that you are different because you've met someone. We celebrate that this time of year and every day. May you be able to uh, uh, count your blessings. A couple of announcements. First of all, we got the, the crocheting and quilting group, or the, uh, the prayer shawl ministry is going to be meeting tomorrow at 1 o'clock. So prayer shawl at 1 o'clock. So if, if you want to know how to knit and crochet, come on over. Uh, you don't need that to have to know that right away. So, <laughs> and the choir meeting, yes, is going to be on Thursday. If you're interested in choir and, and maybe doing a cantata or some special music, that should include all of you. You made such a wonderful, joyful noise. Show up 5.30 this coming Thursday uh, right here in the sanctuary, and we'll, we'll talk about what we, might, what we might be able to put together. With that, are there any other announcements that need to be given? Oh, yes, that's right. Yard cleanup is also this coming Tuesday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Snacks are always really good for this, so you need to show up. So it gets you outside and wonderful. It, you get to hear a few of the birds. Any other announcements? Hunger Haven sign-ups are out in the, in the area outside the door. Uh, please sign up. Yes, for Hunger Haven. Yes, for, yes. for, the, yes, for, for the, tractor pull. Yes. Mother's Day brunch as well. Boy, there's a lot of things here. Uh, Mother's Day brunch, please sign up. Uh, and that's going to be this coming Saturday, the 13th. Uh, and it's at what time in the morning? 9.30. Very good. Thank you. Look at your, your bulletin. There's also a bunch of announcements in there. Any other announcements? All right. May God's grace and peace go with you. May you experience it fully this week. May you go in peace. Serve the Lord. Let's be to God.